Hello and welcome to a new edition of Lucy TV of Luxembourg for Tourism and thank you for joining us for this online event. Today we are here in the nature reserve Haf Remisch in Remerschen. This is also our first stop. Later on we take you through the wild and really impressive forest in the Mantanacher fields and then we are going to visit a small village with a really famous European name, Schengen. Afterwards, we make a small detour to the north of our country and we visit the future of our gastronomy in Dickisch. And finally, we will also go to the south of our country to a young and successful chef. And by the end of this program, we also have a sparkling surprise for you. By the way, if you have any questions or comments, please don't hesitate to write us at trade at lft.lu. Lucy TV is designed in an interactive way. What does that mean for you? Well, you can actually participate in a raffle and you will have the chance to either win top-notch Luxembourgish products or even better, a whole weekend here in the Grand Duchy. What do you need to do for this? You just need to be attentive during our program. We will ask you a question and even present you with the right answer. So I wish you good luck. Luxembourg's precious nature must be preserved. If we talk about sustainable tourism, we need to ask ourselves the question how tourism can be at the same time attractive and also respectful of nature. Luxembourg has a different variety of nature reserves which offer uniquely beautiful and also instructive tourist experiences. This is where we meet uh, Steve Jungen of the Nature and Forest Administration. Good morning. Good morning. What can we discover here in Hafremisch? So what we see here is uh, a formal excavation area. So we have uh, had gravel pits, sand pits, and they have been flooded with, with water, with ground and, and surface water. Um, after they have been abandoned, um, nature took over. So you had, as you can see, a lot of reed growing around here. With reed, uh, they're come, they're coming a lot of different species depending on, on, on that plant. Uh, so this place became home to, to many different uh, protected species like migrating birds, the great bittern, the great crested uh, grebe. Well, this is also uh, why we are trying to, to protect this area. That's what I want to ask. Why has this area been chosen to become a nature reserve? So it has been chosen because uh, when the Mosul was channelized and when there had been a lot of construction works in the 19th century, we lost a lot of habitats like this. Habitats that we would naturally find around a river because you have a dynamism, you have uh, high, low water, you have um, uh, flooding areas. And when that dynamism is lost uh, on, on a river, you also lose the habitat and, and the, the species that go with it. So here, in, in a certain way, we are reproducing those habitats by artificially keeping it open. You're talking about the artificial component of it, but how do you maintain it, actually? So the maintenance means really like cutting trees, mowing grass and, and keeping, uh, keeping it open to avoid that the, the natural succession of plants uh, results in trees uh, taking over and if trees are taking over you have a lot of shade on the ground and you will lose uh, the reed and all the, the species that come with it. Do you have any specific recommendations for visitors? Yes, of course. I mean, you can get very close here. So we invite all nature lovers to come here, but we also invite them to respect some rules, which are uh, please stay on, uh, on the tracks, uh, avoid too much noise, avoid any, any kind of littering and uh, yeah, dogs should be on the leash and uh, not uh, being let in the water. Thank you, Steve Jungen. And actually, there are many beautiful natural reserves in this country, which you can visit, which you can discover. There is one here in the Moselle region, which I would suggest on a beautiful sunny day like this one. You can take a hike through a cool, shady forest along very beautiful rocks. We are talking, of course, about the Mantanacher Fields. Heute laufen wir den CRWL Wanderweg Nummer 43 von Mondanach nach Mertert. Was eigentlich sehr toll ist an der Sache, kann man gratis von Bahnhof zu Bahnhof kommen und kann jederzeit ein- und aussteigen und nur einen Teil oder einen ganzen Teil halt machen oder verschiedene Wanderwege miteinander verbinden. Wir starten hier am Bahnhof von Mondanach, können den Naturschutzzentrum der Naturverwaltung Avirwisch mit seiner Ausstellung Naturschutz und Landwirtschaft besuchen. 
In der Wewisch bieten wir auch verschiedene Aktivitäten an. Die meisten Aktivitäten sind sogar gratis. Unter anderem haben wir auch eine Kräuterwanderung, die sehr interessant ist und von vielen Leuten besucht wird. Anschließend gehen wir durch Streuobstwiesen, eine Kulturlandschaft. Dann kommen wir in das Naturwaldreservat. Anschließend besuchen wir sehr hohe Vielfalt von verschiedenen Waldtypen. Dem Schluchtwald, dem Auenwald. Orchideenwälder, Eichenhainbuchenwälder. Wobei der Schluchtwald der bekannteste und größte aus ganz Luxemburg ist mit 57 Hektar. After this trip through the Montanacher fields, I now welcome you here inside this fascinating building, the Biodiversum, the Biodiversum here in Rimmerschen. And as you see, I am not alone. I welcome this morning's experts, mm -hmm. Nathalie Nayas from the Regional Tourist Office Moselle, Martina Kneipp from the European Center in Schengen, and Bibi Winterstorff, a foodie and a culinary expert. Good morning, ladies. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So our first topic today is experiencing natural treasures and the Moselle region has been a cultural landscape for centuries. Even the Romans have grown their wine here and the viticulture is not only part of our landscape but also part of our cultural heritage. And now we've just visited the Montanacher Fields, Natalie. Um, if you had to choose one spot and one activity in the Moselle region, which one would it be? I think we saw it already on the video. We have a lot of hiking trails here in the region, but we have three special ones uh, which have a quality label. And there is one I especially recommend after Montana and Schengen, of course, that is the one in Anne. It's a nature and wine pass. Um, it's a 9.5 kilometers long trail where you can be with uh, families, but also for more seasoned hikers. So it's uh, up to you. And you can have stunning viewpoints in the wine yards. You can have uh, spots for relaxation. You can visit the charming uh, village of Anne as well, meet uh, the wine makers in this charming village. And there is also a very nice forest uh, where, in, depending on the season, you can have some uh, wild orchids, which is very particular this this trail and as you as i mentioned we have a lot of trails so we have several pocket guides mm -hmm. um, which includes and explains you where you can hike all over the region but natalie let's be honest not everybody is really into hiking by which other means can you explore the moselle region yeah that's true you can also cycle along the moselle river of course or in the wine yards so we we offer you a special service here when you don't want to bring your own bike we have a rental service it's called rent a bike so they have traditional bikes e-bikes uh, they also have bikes for children and you can make a tour with it. And of course, we also have a guided tour. So if you don't want to ex explore the region by your own, you can have uh, knowledge uh, with the guide and have uh, this uh, culture and traditions uh, in, this, in this tour. Okay, let's say you are not at all into sports. You also offer specific wine tours for wine lovers, right? Yes, exactly. <laughs> for wine lovers, we have also specific tours. It's all about wine tasting, knowing about how to proceed to, to produce the wines. And it's uh, more for the, the leisure and uh, well, leisure public and not so for, for wine specialists. It's more for the one who wants to experience and to know the Luxembourgish wines and cremos. So I hear that sounds like a really interesting <laughs> experience to have. Uh, Martina, if you had to pick one activity and one spot here in Luxembourg, which one would you choose? Well, I think I would stay here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, we're surrounded here by nature, what we've seen already in the film. And well, it's really surprising that Luxembourg has so many nature reserves also here in this area. There's not only this one, there are more to it. And talking about activity, I would also go for the Dream Loop, but there's also one in Schengen, which is called Schengen Without Borders. So this is what Schengen is all about. So you go, you start in Luxembourg, you do your around in France and you have beautiful views to Germany. 
So I hear you, you are also into hiking as yes. well. <laughs> okay. Well, Bibi, what about you? If, uh, if uh, you had to choose uh, one activity from your heart or one spot, where would it take you? Um, well, I'm uh, really lucky to live on the border of the so-called uh, little Switzerland, the Müllertal. So I have the chance to go walking with my dog every day almost uh, in the forest. And uh, that would, of course, be my, my spot of choice. But then I also love to uh, go to the Moselle and usually in combination with the wine tasting. <laughs> um, more up in the north of the country, I really love uh, uh, Clairvaux because uh, you can also do very nice hiking tours there. You can eat very well, like everywhere in Luxembourg. And uh, there's, uh, most of all, the very famous uh, exhibition at the uh, Clairvaux Castle, the family of man, that you can see not only once, but uh, I think I go to see it every second year at least. Yeah, it's a very nice so exhibition. it's absolutely worth visiting in combination, again, with hiking, with nature, with uh, fine food. And then, of course, Luxembourg City is also worth mentioning because it's such a green city. So if you love nature, you can even visit the capital of our country and still be in nature. There's this uh, green valley that splits it almost in half and uh, yeah, that's really uh, a nice, uh, a lot of nature everywhere. Yeah, and actually since you mentioned it, Luxembourg City has even been recently awarded as one of the greenest uh, yep. cities uh, in, uh, in the world as well. Um, I'm sure that you are already waiting eagerly for our raffle. So. Here's the question that you need to answer if you want to win one of our beautiful prizes. So, what is the name of the ship on which the agreement on freedom of travel in Europe was signed? Is it the answer number A, MS Princess Marie Astrid? Is it MS Grand Duchesse Charlotte? Or is it MS Princess Alexandra? So actually, um, you might already have a clue, you might already have an answer, and you can send it to us at trade.lft.lu. Please don't hesitate. If you know it, just send it in straight away. And if you have no clue whatsoever, fret not, don't worry. We will give you a clue later on in our program. But first off, we will go to our next topic, which is Europe in Luxembourg. And as you might know, or you might not know, Luxembourg is one of the capitals of the EU, next to Strasbourg and to Brussels. If you come to Luxembourg, you will find many European institutions. It is quite hard for me to pick a few, but I will pick a few. So we have, for example, the European Court of Justice in Kirchberg in Luxembourg City. We have uh, the birthplace of the founding member or founder of the European Union, that is Robert Schumann, and his birthplace is in Clausen. And we also have, for example, the European Center in Schengen, and Martina is already smiling at me. She <laughs> likes me to make uh, some advertisement uh, for this beautiful place, which you should visit if you come around. But if you make your way around Luxembourg, you will find out quite quickly that we are really a multicultural yeah, melting pot, really. There are 170 nations living peacefully side by side. We have a proportion of foreigners which is way over 50%, one of the highest in the EU. And all of this is... Yeah, it's basically symbolizing the Luxembourgish way of life, the Luxembourgish spirit. It is European. And if you come to our country, you will see that we are a very open-minded, a very cosmopolitan society. And one person, one person who is at the same time really attached to his home country, Luxembourg, and also to his cosmopolitan ways, is the architect François Valentini. Über die Jahrzehnte äh, ist äh, diese Ortschaft oder diese Gemeinde, diese Großgemeinde Schengen jetzt äh, doch äh, so aufgestellt, dass man äh, sich nicht langweilt. Das ist ein gutes Zeichen, dass das Früchte trägt und ein Erfolgsrezept geworden ist äh, für, für diese Region auch. Wir leben ja hier, wir Luxemburg überhaupt, wir sind ja ein sehr kleines Land äh, und wir haben überall Grenzen. Wir mussten es wahrnehmen, aber wir haben uns eigentlich nicht drum geschert, um es mal salopp aufzutragen. Das ist etwas, was unsere, unserem Pragmatismus sehr nahe kommt, dass man 
dass es Winzerfamilien gibt, die eben in Deutschland, in Frankreich, in Luxemburg Weinberge haben und das Feld gehört bestellt und da ist eine Grenze nicht opportun. Wir sehen das eher pragmatisch, sagen wir mal so, ideologisch sehen wir das auf keinen Fall. Also ich war sehr früh bin ich aus diesem Dorf weg. Mit elf bin ich nach Belgien ins Internat und äh, dann später über Frankreich nach Wien zum Studium. Und äh, meine Verbindung zu, zu diesem Land, zu diesem Ort äh, ist äh, trotzdem sehr intensiv, weil die Weinkultur und, und diese Landschaft, die Mosel, äh, die Menschen, die hier arbeiten, mein Vater war Tischler, unser Nachbar war Schmied. Es hat äh, von allen Handwerksleuten immer etwas zu sehen und zu lernen gegeben. Und das hat mich geprägt. Und äh, irgendwie sucht man das sein Leben lang, auch wenn man in große Städte kommt. Wenn ich äh, in Wien bin oder wenn ich nach Shanghai komme, suche ich mir diese Orte aus, wo ich sehe, wo Menschen äh, noch was mit ihren Händen tun und wie sie ihre Umgebung gestalten. Wir haben erst so richtig hier in den 90er Jahren angefangen mit Bauen und haben dann die Schulen, die Jugendherberge gemacht, dann dieses Museum äh, Biodiversum. Unsere Bauten hier sind doch sehr auf das Ländliche bezogen. Diese Sprache ist eine neue Sprache, aber sie ist äh, beeinflusst von dem, was ich äh, früher hier gesehen habe. Alte Schuppen, alter Putz, äh, Holz, verwittertes Holz und so weiter. Alle diese synthetischen äh, Stoffe, die wir verwenden, haben an sich keine Tiefe und damit keine Seele. Es muss eine Aussage haben, es muss, auch, wenn es, auch wenn die Aussage äh, untergeordnet ist, also einer Natur untergeordnet. Es ist so, wie eine Meinung zu, zu einer Frage haben. Man muss eine klare Meinung haben oder man ist still. Das setzt eben voraus, dass man sich mit, äh, mit der Landschaft auseinandersetzt, mit, den, mit der Sonne, mit der Geografie, mit der Kultur, mit den Menschen. Yeah, we saw all these uh, beautiful pictures here from the Moselle region. Uh, Martina, what does Europe actually mean for Luxembourg and Luxembourg for Europe, especially in Schengen? Well, I think one does not go without the other, so it's really working very strongly together. Well, if you talk about Schengen, of course, you talk about open borders. Well, Schengen is only a little village, which is uh, also quite extraordinary. We always say it's a little village with a very big name. So open borders is now part of our everyday life. And one of our mission is that we explain to people that this is something which is not normal, which is something we have to work on every day. And when people come to Schengen, Well, they see, as we've seen in the film already, they see flags, they see sculptures, they see uh, monuments and so on. And we try to give an experience. We try to show the spirit of Schengen, what we call it, the spirit of open borders and this milestone also in European integration. So when people come to Schengen, they find out about the region, they find out about the political part, of course, of the Schengen Agreement. And of course, they find out about our museum. And we are very, very happy to uh, announce that in two years' time, we will have a new element of Uh, what is part of Schengen. It's the ship where the Schengen Agreement was signed in 1985, so it's 38 years ago. And the ship which was sold after the signature is coming back to where it belongs, we'd say. So it comes back to Schengen. So the MS Princesse Marie Astrid will be in Schengen and be part of the museum at the time. Ah, this is wonderful. Actually, um, uh, when you talk so much about uh, these open-mindedness, um, I think that we all on this table here feel it really, this European, f all of us. I mean, everyone mm. who has been in contact with Luxembourg is usually very surprised that this country is really so open-minded and so, yeah, just forward-thinking in its way because it's really strongly connected to Europe. Um, Natalie, what, uh, if you would have to pick like an idea of a European feeling in the Moselle region, what does it represent for you? 
I think for me personally, I'm, I'm living it every day because we work together very strongly with every project with French and German neighbors. So for us, it's an all day uh, business and we, we're working together and we live it. Yeah. You live it and you feel it in your everyday life. I think, exactly. Bibi, Bibi, you do too. What does Europe in Luxembourg mean for you in particular? I think there is hardly any country that is more representative of Europe than Luxembourg. And be it in the, uh, in the, in the population. Uh, personally, I'm married to an Italian who came to Luxembourg to work. <laughs> so, uh, and most of our friends, most of the families I know are uh, mixed families like this. And it's so diverse and it's so thrilling. And um, of Of course, also the geographical position of Luxembourg, right in the center of Europe, um, strongly influenced our culture, our history. Uh, and then there's also the stability, the freedom of travel. And there again, Schengen is, of course, synonym. Uh, that makes it so appealing. It's, a, it's really a lovely country, country to live in and um, to, has, to have as a home base. I'm also traveling a lot. Uh, by the way, I'm also publishing a travel magazine in which we always keep a little spot for Luxembourg, even if we talk about a lot of international uh, destinations. But the Our country is so beautiful that we always try to also have um, an, at least one or two articles about the country. And then when you travel and you come to uh, passport control and it's uh, Schengen passports and other passports, <laughs> that is such a good feeling because, uh, yeah, that's where I'm from. <laughs> yeah, that's actually true. And uh, many people are even surprised to find out they don't even know that Schengen is an actual place somewhere. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> somewhere so they're really surprised when yeah. they come into it. They're like, you know, oh, this is such a small village, actually. And yeah, it's exactly. It's such a big name. <laughs> That's why we do things like this. Yeah. <laughs> exactly, and that is why they should uh, visit Schengen exactly. as well. Um, actually, Martina, do you have also like a more personal story that connects you with Europe and Luxembourg? Well, yes. Well, I have the Luxembourg story, like Vivian <laughs> yeah. also said. Well, I'm uh, of German origin and I came to Luxembourg because I met my Luxembourgish husband, but not in Luxembourg, but in Greece. <laughs> so I came back, which is nearly 40 years ago, so a long time, different times really. And well, that, that's my story. But this is obviously the story of a lot of, of people many. living here. Yes. Yeah, yeah. there is a saying in German which says, uh, alle Wege führen nach Rom, all the paths <laughs> lead to Rome, but actually they all lead to Luxembourg, <laughs> Luxembourg. <laughs> <laughs> as we hear here, because many people have the same kind of connective stories. Um, but um, Europe is just one, one topic that we are talking about today. Another topic is Luxembourg as a culinary uh, destination. Because in Luxembourg, people really love good food and excellent wine. The famous Moselle Cremant has already won uh, many, many prizes in international competitions, and so have our wines. And of course, if we talk about good wine, good wine goes hand in hand with excellent food. The variety of our cuisine is great, and the gastronomic level is really high. I can proudly say that Luxembourg boasts uh, not less than nine restaurants which have been awarded with a Michelin star and even eight with a so-called Bip Gourmand. Now, uh, however, we all know it, every chef needs to start small, everyone needs to learn the trade. And in Luxembourg, there is one school where the future of our gastronomy lies. This is the hotel school in Dickirch. Mein Name ist Michael Lanners, ich bin der Direktor der Hotel- und Tourismusschule von Luxemburg, die in Dikirch angesiedelt ist. In der Hotel- und Tourismusschule kann man eine ganze Bandbreite von Berufen lernen. Das geht vom Koch bis zum Hospitalitätsmanager. Also wir versuchen den Schülern in dieser Schule die Grundkenntnisse von all den Berufen der Gastronomie ihnen das beizubringen. Die Basics, die sie brauchen, um später in diesen Beruf arbeiten zu können. Wir haben verschiedene Kochateliers in unserer Schule. Teilweise Metzgerei, wo Fleisch zerlegt wird, Gemüse gerüstet wird. Dann Küchen, in denen entweder individuell oder in Teams gearbeitet wird. Und des Weiteren drei Patisseries, wo Desserts vorbereitet werden. Wir haben auch in diesem Sinne ein Trainingsrestaurant, wo Kunden von außen sich äh, verwöhnen lassen können. Einerseits aber, wo die Schüler vor allem zeigen können, was sie gelernt haben. Ce qui me fascine à la cuisine, c'est que je peux travailler avec ce que j'aime bien, donc le manger, les aliments différents, que je peux laisser ma créativité dans les plats et que je peux faire plaisir aux gens qui vont manger. Mon rêve, c'est d'ouvrir un hôtel plus tard, 
Gastronomik. Absolventen haben in der Regel ein sehr, sehr schönes berufliches Tätigkeitsfeld und wir sind auch sehr stolz, sehr viele Schüler in leitenden, führenden, wichtigen Positionen äh, zu finden. Einer unserer ehemaligen Schülerinnen, die Caroline Esch, besitzt ein äh, eigenes Restaurant in das Pavillon Edenroos. Wir sind sehr stolz auf diese ehemalige Schülerin, die eigentlich zeigt, was man hier in dieser Schule im berufsbildenden Bereich als Köchin lernen kann. Je trouve que c'est que c'est une très belle école parce qu'il y a beaucoup de moyens pour former les jeunes. Ils ont des installations de meilleure qualité. C'est vrai qu'ici, on a petit à petit des restaurants qui s'y installent et on a une gastronomie qui évolue au fur et à mesure. Et je pense que c'est vraiment important en ce moment de voir un peu ce que les nouveaux chefs peuvent, peuvent proposer. Oh, well, you know, when you see all of this uh, good food, you're already getting a bit hungry, maybe. Well, I am at least. Uh, Bibi, um, you are an expert when it comes to hunger, I would say. You are uh, a yes. <laughs> you are a gourmet. Uh, you are a culinary expert. I'm sure that you know many of the restaurants uh, that we've already seen. Uh, you've been to plenty of restaurants. Indulgence really is your business. What is so special about Luxembourgish uh, gastronomy? Well, I, in general, I love food already to start with. And then there's a reason why almost 10 years ago I started publishing the only food and lifestyle magazine in Luxembourg. It's called Kachen. Kachen means cooking in Luxembourgish. It's a food and lifestyle because uh, I believe that it's important not only to talk about food, but also about the history of food and about everything that goes along with it, uh, up to the, the, the fact that wine is also a strong factor in our uh, local cuisine. And Uh, what I really love a lot about the Luxembourgish cuisine, and I, I sort of got the knowledge about it from my grandmother, who was an excellent uh, cook, not a chef, she was a good cook. Um, and um, it's a very down-to-earth, a very rustic cuisine, but of course, Nowadays, Luxembourgish, the Luxembourgish gastronomic scene has evolved and it has been over the centuries um, uh, influenced by so many different uh, cultures due to our situation in Europe, but also due to the fact that over the centuries, Luxembourg has been invaded by the French, by the Dutch, by the Spanish. So all this still reflects in our cuisine today. And so it's a, it's a rather rural, down-to-earth, um, slightly heavy, very nourishing cuisine that you can still find in restaurants. There are still many restaurants who really um, try to uh, present that typical uh, Luxembourgish cuisine, also mainly by using local ingredients. Uh, but then, of course, there's the gastronomic scene with the starred Michelin restaurants um, who are more influenced, I'd say, in a French way. But then we also saw in the video, uh, the Pavillon Eden Rose. Uh, this is a restaurant that is led by a young uh, team of chefs, very young ones, who just got their Michelin star. And they uh, prepare exclusively uh, gluten-free dishes, which is more than just a trend. So this is, of course, the modern ev evolution. And yet, uh, it's important to have both. So what we try in the magazine is to um, preserve the traditional recipes and really try to find them. Not everyone today eats uh, bone schlup all the time or uh, Grand Prix Kischertje. Mm -hmm. Grand Prix Kischertje, yes, but there are other dishes that tend to get a little bit forgotten, uh, even if they are still transmitted from one family, uh, from, from one family member to the other, like my grandmother did with me. But then uh, we also present, of course, the gastronomic scenes, the but restaurants. You have already talked about how the kitchen is continuously evolving, but what keeps it interesting over the years? Well, I think the fact that, uh, again, we have uh, in the gastronomic scene, in the restaurant scene, we have a lot of people who come from abroad. We have a lot of French chefs and Belgian chefs, but then, we, of course, we also have uh, some local chefs, Luxembourgers, who are very known, like, name, for example, uh, Lea Linse, who was the first woman to win the Bocuse d'Or, and she just recently passed uh, the scepter to her son, who was at least as talented as her. But then we have uh, a two-star restaurant, Cyril Mollard, 
who's absolutely worth the visit. We have another very exceptional place in Burglinster with René Mathieu, who is uh, the world's best plant-based restaurant. And uh, just going out in the morning with him when he gathers his plants that he uses them to cook is uh, an experience that uh, you should try to, to live with quite, him. It's quite an exceptional <laughs> experience as well. Um, uh, Martina, do you maybe have like a favorite restaurant or maybe like an insider tip for us? Well, this is a very difficult question, I think. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> well, you, you mentioned so many of them and they are all beautiful and very, and very many good. more. Yeah, that's it. So I would maybe grab a bottle of Cremant and a piece of local cheese because there are so many regional yeah. products in Luxembourg. I would find a beautiful spot somewhere in the vineyards and enjoy the beautiful views. Well, very well how you answered that question. A very difficult question, as you pointed out, because there is just such a, there's so many, it's such a variety of really good restaurants in Luxembourg. Um, Natalie, um, if you had to pick um, a favorite dish, maybe a favorite Luxembourgish dish, which one oh, would it yes. be? I have to admit, I'm much more in French cuisine. But <laughs> yes, if you ask me for a Luxembourgish dish, I think Knidlen would be a good plan. It's a sort of uh, dumplings with uh, served with uh, creamy sauce and bacon and it passes all the time and with a good uh, cup of uh, cremant. It's always good. And actually must have as well, right? Yeah, and by the way, Knidlen is the one recipe that is the most searched after on our, on our website, kachen.lu, uh, which, by the way, comes in three languages, so in German, in French, and in English, which, again, is typical for Luxembourg. For Luxembourg. And that is really one of the most uh, looked-after mm. recipes. Well, <laughs> as we see, we can still enjoy uh, maybe some uh, Knidlen later on, but I don't know how you <laughs> feel at the moment. I would love to have some Knidlen, but I also would love to have some wine. Maybe I might just be speaking for myself, but I think no. no, maybe everybody would try some wine here. And that's why I want to present you with our surprise guest, Claire Zertznich from the Institut uh, Viti Vinicole. Uh, good morning, Claire. Good morning, hello, welcome. And, uh, we have a surprise wine tasting here for us. So, Claire, wh <laughs> which wines have you brought today? So, I brought you two Luxembourgish still wines. One is the Auxerrois, one is the Pinot Gris, and the famous Cremant you already talked about. Yeah, the one that has won uh, many, many prizes here, many competitions. Well, I will help you, I think, opening, you know, of I course, think we yeah. should try Be some. Uh, but maybe you could already explain us a bit uh, also the, 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 di the difference between, for example, a Pinot Gris and an, an Oxera. Why would you choose a Pinot Gris, for example? Yeah, so both belong to the same family. They are from the Pinot family, like Pinot Blanc, Pinot Gris, but also Oxera and Chardonnay belong to the same uh, variety family. And... Um, yeah, they are very uh, typical for Luxembourg, or especially the Auxerrois. It's a typical Luxembourgish uh, variety. You can find it also in the Alsace, for example, or in uh, Germany, but mostly in Luxembourg. And it's a, it's a variety which has a mild acidity and uh, also very well um, balanced um, sugar level. And... Um, <laughs> and, that's and, the life effect. And that's also like the life effect. Actually, what I want to do now, I want to, you know, uh, pop this bottle because that's what we've been waiting for. So let's try this. And I try to get it like out. Oh, woo oh, hey. We love that sound. <laughs> yeah, it's actually a very Luxembourgish sound, to be honest. When you will hear, when you walk around the, the Moselle region, you will yeah. hear it everywhere all yeah. the time. So let's, uh, I think, have a taste. Are you uh, into Cremant? Yes. Yes. Of course. I love Cremant. So the bubbles, bubbles are great. Yeah. Okay. All right. I will give I'm, you the honors because you are our surprise <laughs> guest and surprising us with such a good, such a good wine. And um, do you have any preferences when it comes to, for example, Cremant? Thank you so much. I will just pass it on. Thank you. Uh, Nathalie, Cremant, yeah. Pinot Gris, Auxerrois. No, for any me, I prefer the Pinot Gris. Oh, I yeah. think you can pair it with everything and it's uh, an easy going wine. Martina, any favorites? You, you already talked about uh, Cremant before, yeah, huh? I so like, <laughs> I like Cremant very much, but I would also go with the Auxerrois because I think this is, uh, for me, still it's a special mm -hmm. wine. Mm -hmm. okay. um, so the Pinot Gris, you would suggest to use a Pinot Gris when you are like barbecuing, or rather with some fish, yes. meat, with anything. Uh, Pinot Gris is also a very expressive variety, so you have a lot of uh, fruity aromas, mostly tropical fruits and that uh, marriage very well to, to barbecue, salads and also fish. Yes. 
for What about summer? when you go and you have like something a bit more um, exotic, like sushi? Which wine would you suggest? Could accompany? Uh, there the the Oxaro is very, uh, very, very, very uh, popular too. Yes. All right. Well then, uh, cheers. Ladies, to Luxembourg and to Luxembourg wine. Yeah. <laughs> Thank yes. you, Claire, for way, surprising us. We yeah. also like to cook with wine. I mean, not cook and drink wine, but also <laughs> use the wine <laughs> for the food. Because there's like one uh, very uh, delicious Luxembourg specialty, that's the Rieslings per State, yeah. where um, right. it's like a baked um, pastry with meat inside, and then you uh, pour... Um, Uh, Riesling. Riesling jelly yeah. on top. And uh, that's really a specialty that should you come to visit the country, you should try. <laughs> the Riesling's Pastet is a specialty you should try. We already talked about the Knittle. Well, <laughs> cheers. And in cheers, Luxembourg, yes. we just say Prost. 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 <laughs> well, I think you should mm -hmm. definitely head over here and try some of this excellent Cremant. Um, This will be obviously the end of our program because, as you see, we are quite motivated to keep <laughs> drinking this wine and to keep um, yeah, talking for a little bit. But you must all be waiting for an answer, for an answer to the winning uh, question because we still have the raffle and I will present you now the winner. But maybe first the answer. So we were asking on which ship, the name of the ship on which the, uh, the agreement of the freedom of travel in Europe was signed. And it's the answer A, MS Princess Marie Astrid Martina has pointed it out several <laughs> times. You might have seen a little bit of a picture before floating through. And the winner is Marco Benches. Congratulations. Uh, I think we can send the congrats to the Netherlands uh, for a weekend in Luxembourg for two people. And also congrats to Marioline Sangas. You have won a wine package and you can taste all of these wines that we have currently here. So as I said, we are in this fascinating building here. So thank you to our hosts for, yeah, no, for giving us this building to have this program in here. Thank you to our guests. Thank you, Claire, for this excellent wine. But for you out there, this, not, this does not need to be the end. You can still come over here. You can take one of our fam trips or one of our press trips. We have a really good team, a press and trade of the press and trade department, and they can show you around. They can not only make you taste this excellent wine, they can also go with you to some of our awarded restaurants. They can show you the beautiful natural spots here in Luxembourg, or they can show you Europe in Luxembourg, as I pointed out before. But now we can still um, see that there are many, many other things that Luxembourg has to offer. So we did talk about the Moselle region, but also before, Bibi, you talked about the north of the country. We talked about the Müllertal region. There is so much more to see. And if you want to experience any of that, or if you have questions regarding any kind of Luxembourgish thing or European thing, as you heard before, because we are quite close <laughs> one to another, just give us a, pop us an, uh, a mail or ask us a question at trade at lft.lu. We are very eager to answer your questions and we really, really want to show you around. So please, please use the occasion and, you know, take a fam trip, take a press trip, come and visit and then motivate more people to come to Luxembourg. It is a beautiful country. Well, this is it from us, I think. We mm -hmm. say again, cheers, cheers. and see cheers. you next time on Lucy TV.